sensational hosts, Drusilla and Gilsey. And welcome to Moon Momentum, the podcast where we discuss the Sailor Moon canon for what we affectionately call, you guessed it, Moon Moments. Moments that we feel exemplify what Sailor Moon stands for and represents. Now, without further ado, da 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 da, let's <laughs> jump right in. Uh, we're today we're discussing episodes ten through fourteen, and this pretty hefty. There were five episodes that we had to go through, <laughs> and you know it. There was a lot that happened. These episodes were meeting Ray or the third Sailor Scout, Sailor Mars. There were some strange rumors going around about a bus disappearing full of passengers coming from a shrine, and of course, Usagi goes to check it out. Actually, she goes to check out the love amulets. <laughs> and there she meets the beautiful shrine maiden, Rei Hino. After saving the bus passengers from another plot to steal their energy, Sailor Mars officially joins the team. And then we get more cute hangouts with the girls after. They decide to go to amusement park, where they meet the park princess, who turns out to be a creepy negaverse energy sucking doll. And then there's the romantic cruise where no one has a boyfriend, but they still go because they want to. And we see Jedi as cruise ship captain getting hit on by Usagi. But of course, the negaverse demon Thestris is also gunning for him. Neither of them succeed in winning his heart. And the girls save the day yet again. <laughs> um, and then, because Queen Beryl is super fed up with Jedi, as she should be, because he keeps failing against 14-year-old girls, Jedi issues a final fight to the Sailor Scouts. And they have to meet at an airplane strip for some reason at some ungodly hour. <laughs> and here, Jedi actually came to play. So he chases the girls around with an airplane, Tuxedo Mask appears, but then, oh my god, is he dead? What? But with some girl power, the Sailor Scouts manage to defeat Jedi, and Tuxedo Mask emerges from the watery depths alive. Sucks for Jedi, because now he is the opposite of that, and gets replaced by a golden, flowy-haired Neferite. The stuff romance novel dream covers are made of guys, gals, and non-binary pals. <laughs> and then we get to see Nephrite try his hand in gathering more energy, and he tries to take it from Tanistar Rui. But alas, Sailor Moon has also gotten stronger, and defeats him with Tuxedo Mask. Game, set, match! Love might mean something to the Sailor Scouts, but it means nothing on the tennis courts. For you tennis aficionados out there, wink. <laughs> so, without further ado, Drusilla, did you have any moon moments that you would like to bring up that I you did. found? This chunk of episodes, for some reason, was it was brutal to go through because the first couple of episodes I was constantly writing stuff down. I made three different lists to try and organize my thoughts. Uh, there were like the first two episodes were were the worst and and, and worst, you know. Oh my god, I'm watching the Sailor Moon anime to look up inspiring moments. <laughs> it was the worst. But of course, I made it harder on myself because if you've listened to our previous episode, we discussed the fact that I'm not only watching the sub, which is what we agreed to watch, I'm also watching the deep dub and I'm watching Crystal and reading the manga. And I decided to throw in the viz dub because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> and so I'm also experiencing all of those at the same time because i was writing so much while watching the sub when i watched those other versions i was having to pay very close attention to those spots to see if they differed or you know if there was different translation or how they handled it differently and i've said it before and i will say it again this is not a comparison podcast but when it comes to specific moon moments i think it is interesting to look at how they're portrayed across this bit of canon that we're looking at. I'm going to go a little backwards. My first moon moment comes from episode 14. And that is 
the fact that Naru is worried about her friend and very intelligently takes actions in order to resolve it. Uh, I think it'd be really easy, maybe it'd be, I don't know, really cheap writing for her to, for her to get mad. Like, why are you acting like this? You know, being really aggressive. But that's not what Naru does. Um, she's known Rui her entire life. She knows what kind of person she is. She knows what her personality is. And she watches her go down this dark path. And, and she's not sure what the issue is. And uh, she tries to stay close to her. And when that doesn't work, she calls over a friend for advice. And uh, Nar lays out the situation. And even Usagi says, well, maybe she's um, just stressed about the upcoming tennis tournament. Nara says, I thought that too. Nara did not immediately jump to, my friend is being controlled by the Negaverse. She's having her energy sucked out. <laughs> you know, she, she tried to come up with practical reasons why she might be this way. But then analyzing the situation, decided, no, there's something else. So this can't be it you know and obviously she's known her for her entire life and so she's had to have known her as she's gone through other tennis tournaments Mm -hmm. so it's like she's never acted like this before so uh, her going with Usagi to I guess the best word would be intervention Uh, sort of like a Mm -hmm. like a pseudo intervention they show up at the place where she's training and uh, puts herself in front of Rui and says, you know, you need to stop. You need to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Just, and like the language that she uses is just, it's not you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. It's I want to help you. And I think that's really important. Uh, And then I, I think, and then I think Usagi says, yeah, she's only trying to help you. Like, it's not the greatest language because it it's not victim blaming exactly, but you're mm-hmm. putting the stress and onus on the person that's struggling mm-hmm. to reach out, you know? And I think this is kind of a great moment of Naru not just kind of blundering into things, but intelligently going about seeking help from for her friend. And mm-hmm. so that's why I thought this was a Is the language moment. the same across all of the all the versions that you watched? So the the viz dub is usually pretty much exactly the same as the sub. And um, I didn't write down the actual language, but I'm pretty sure that the deek dub is also, if not exactly the same, the same tone, like the same version. And for all the listeners out there, uh, make note this historic day, Gilsey made me bring up the deep dub. I did not bring up the deep dub <laughs> on my own. <laughs> so, and of course, there's no there's no manga equivalent to this episode. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that was my moon moment. I thought, yeah. you know, we should, we should all... Tr- I know, especially now, during the pandemic, it's a lot harder to keep up with people. But, you know, friends recognize when f- friends start acting differently. And also, don't guilt trip you for going through hard times. Yes, and, mm-hmm. and family too, not just friends. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially family. It's good to have like that boundary of I know your family, but also you're being being kind of mean to me. <laughs> but yeah, you get, bring up a good point. I didn't think. See, this was one of those moments where I thought it was a mini moment because I really liked that she was super concerned for her friend and she was going about it in a really healthy way especially now since you brought up the language and how she sought help from people that were outside of her that kind of knew Rui but were also removed enough so that they were able to kind of have a clearer picture of what was happening I think for me, initially, I didn't say it was a moon moment, moon moment, because I think it went back 
to our discussion of being a decent human being. Mm. So if you saw someone, like a friend, that was going through something or just being mean, you would say something. But with your points that you've brought up and the fact that, you know, they've known each other for so long and she was able to pick up the nuances of the change in Rui's personality, I think Naru definitely, I think this is a moon moment. Um, yeah, score one for Priscilla. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I would agree, this is a moon moment. <laughs> I was also fully prepared to start arguing that it is a decent human being thing to reach out to a friend who's in trouble, but I also think a lot of us are not well prepared um, mm-hmm. or knowledgeable enough to uh, recognize what you should say and what you shouldn't say. And she, and Naru definitely went above and beyond with mm-hmm. it. She she didn't have to go and reach out to Sagi. She didn't have to go and be like, Rui, this, this isn't a thing for you. Like, you need to talk. Like, do you, what can I do for you? And you definitely, you definitely won me over um, with that language bit. <laughs> I was going to argue that it, this is a decent human kind of thing, but the language bit definitely mm. like threw me onto the other side. And it's something that uh, you know, I and I can't recall the precise language, but they at one point there were posters um, that I would see around New York City. It would have two people sitting on a stoop or something. And one person would have a speech bubble that said something like, you should talk to me if something is going on. But then those words were like struck out and there was a different speech bubble that said, I'm here to listen. Mm -hmm. Making yourself a safe space Mm -hmm. and making it comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And also trying to just alleviate the pressure of seeming like you need them to talk to you. It's more it's more of along the lines of when you're ready, I am here for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go Naru for being an A plus friend in this episode. Yeah. Actually in most episodes, at least so far, she's been she's been really great. Her and Ami, I think, are really great friends. Great friends to have. Yeah. That actually brings me to one of my moon moments with Ami, if we go back to episode 10. We're going to be here a while. <laughs> Let me just say, <laughs> we're going to be here a while. Yeah. Keep going. Oh, no, I'm should sorry we, to interrupt. Okay. Should, should, I, should I hold off then? Maybe we should. Okay. Let's, let's go. Okay. So I had something for 14. Did you have anything for 13? I do have something for 13. Okay. Because I, I have sort of a thing for 13. So go ahead. Because <laughs> during the fight when they are getting chased by the airplane and Jadeite is being an absolute prick to the girls and being like, oh, you're girls, like, do what girls do. And then the Sailor Scouts were like, girl power! Mm-hmm. Like, you, just because we're girls doesn't mean we can't fight. And like, just because we are of this gender doesn't mean we can be underestimated and I think that whole that whole bit of the girl power kind of segment I think it just it has to be a moon moment because it's very I see you (laughs) what do you have to say okay so I had this as a mini moon moment with a question mark because I feel like it just it just comes out of nowhere it's so in your face of girl power ish that if Jedi had been a misogynist jerk the entire his entire run, I would have been more on board with this because it's yeah, the girls are standing up to him like even him saying like, oh I hate working under Queen Beryl she's a woman and she doesn't know what she's doing like something like that I would have been more on board with this but the entire time Jedi has never said anything like that and so this just comes out of nowhere i would be more apt to consider this a 
I don't think it's strong enough to be a moon moment on just this, but in the deep dub, they actually cut out the female empowerment stuff. And instead, Jedi says something like, do you think you can defeat me? Well, you can't, or something like that. And um, they say, no, we can, like, when we work together, we can defeat uh, evil like you. Like, you're not going to win. And then they do the, like, all in with the, like, hands and everything. (laughs) So I actually, I like it better in the deep dub because it doesn't have that. Because it comes out of nowhere in the sub. And, I mean, Sailor Moon is a huge girl power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's just, for some reason, it's just so on the nose and so in your face, whereas we haven't seen that. And I don't know, maybe maybe it should be a moon moment, but it shouldn't be, we shouldn't give credit to the show for it. I don't know. Like, this is, I would love to hear what the audience thinks, because I love that this is in there. But in terms of the placement, and it, it's just so awkwardly shoved in. Because, like, mm-hmm. Jedi is... Jedi, but he's never been these sailor scouts will never stop me because they're just girls and girls are stupid and so I I don't want to harsh your moon moment but <laughs> see I thought I thought that it was sudden because this was like the first time all three of them are working together and it's kind of like Jedi sees how powerful all three of them have become and work together and just realizing oh wait maybe i can use this the the fact that they are girls i don't know why he didn't use their ages because (laughs) they're 14 (laughs) fighting against a grown man like a grown alien man thing and maybe if he jedi himself hadn't said anything like that if he was just like oh you scouts or you senshi will never stop me and then they said, we will because we're, we're girls and uh, we can defeat down with the patriarchy or whatever. <laughs> Maybe I would have liked that better because um, it wouldn't have come from, I don't know. I, I just, Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I You bring up good points. Now that I'm looking at it, like, it does seem very in your face. But at the time that I was watching it, I kind of liked that it was in your face because then it was more of like, oh, pay attention to this. But it does seem kind of just plopped in there. I wonder if it's because we're looking at it with like a 2021 perspective. Mm. We've sort of become jaded at this point. Uh, Whenever a media property has some sort of feminist message, it's always, we always look at it cynically of, are they really trying to, uh, yeah, girl power? Or are, are they just uh, putting it in because they know it will sell? Mm. And so I wonder if we're looking at it with that cynical viewpoint mm-hmm. of back in the day, you probably didn't see shows say stuff like this. Mm. Sailor Moon is like one of the first magical gold properties and to have it just flat out say female empowerment and uh, mm-hmm. we can do anything a man can do you know sort of thing it was probably pretty revolutionary mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not super familiar with anime at the time yeah. and in general in America I don't think we had that many cartoons that were female based or had more than one token female character so I wonder if I wonder if that's what it is. We're looking at mm-hmm. it like as a like, moment in time. Yes, that is absolutely a moon moment. Mm-hmm. But now it feels kind of I don't know forced or like as a second thought. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we have almost thirty years <laughs> on the show at this <laughs> point, and we have had all of these female-led movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. I cry every time I watch Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched it, I think, four times at this point, three or four times, and I oh my gosh. always cry at the No Man's Land scene. Like, it, it just, oh. yeah. So, I mean... She's, she's 
so powerful. Like, just Gail Gadot. Mm. I'm pro- am I pronouncing her name right? She's just so powerful. Mm. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah. yes. But, like, before yeah. the movie came out, I, if I kind of had a wolf day, I would watch the trailer. And it would make me feel so much better. <laughs> so, so, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Um, I don't know if, should we give it... I don't know. Do we want to call know. it a moon moment, or do we want to call it a mini moon moment, or an honorary moon moment, or a 1993? You do moment? bring up a really good. <laughs> you you do bring up a really good point about the era of when it was made. Dang, I didn't think we would run into this kind of thing. And that may also lead into why was Sailor Moon so popular across the globe? We didn't really have female-led shows, or female-led cartoons, and maybe that's why, or, you know, part of the reason why Sailor Moon was so beloved. It'd be interesting to see how this moment was translated across the different adaptations. Because like I said, the English dub does away with the female empowerment stuff and just says, we can work together and we can defeat you because we're a team. It emphasizes that aspect. So it'd be interesting to see how much of that, like whether the female empowerment stuff was kept in other languages or not. Yeah. I can't remember if it was kept in the Tagalog version. So yeah, if you originally watched Sailor Moon in a different language, let us know if you remember the scene. Did they keep it girl power or did they translate it to something else in your language yes yeah tweet us let us know Mm -hmm. on all our social medias (laughs) i was not expecting to go into all that um (laughs) episode 12 the cruise ship episode i had a honorable mention but no actual moon moment my honorable mention goes out to ami when Ray was trying to ask her to come with her to the cruise ship and be her plus one, and Ami was saying, "Oh, I do, like I feel bad because Usagi want, really wants to go, but then she gets convinced to go." So I thought, "Oh wow, that's really commendable of Ami trying to sway Ray into bringing Usagi," but then she caves. So if she hadn't caved, I would have said, "Oh, okay, stellar friend." moon moment okay but i i would just say this is like an honorable mention she tried (laughs) though i would say that's more of an ami thing like rather than being a decent human being i think that's just an ami thing i think ami her default is to kind of play i don't know mediator i think her first Mm. thought would have been because i'm sure she's not super interested in it anyway and so her first thought would well usagi would probably have a better time than me. Yeah, I think it's more of a just Ami personality thing. Uh, Episode 11. (laughs) Had no moon moments, but I I did maybe have want to say something in this episode that sort of calls back to what we were talking about in episode 2. When they meet Mamoru on the train. (laughs) (laughs) Because in episode 2, if you haven't listened to it, why are you listening to episode 4 if you haven't listened to episode 2? But we said that we didn't know if maybe Mamoru understood how much his words hurt Usagi sometimes. And that he was maybe just a high school boy who enjoyed teasing this girl. But he has a line here where he says, she sure hits where it hurts. Uh. And it made me recast that conversation we had in a different light. Do you think maybe he, like, when Usagi sees him on the show, he's like, oh, great, this guy, he's going to say something really mean to me. Do you think when he sees Usagi on the street, he's like, ugh, that girl, she's going to say something mean to me? <laughs> and so that is interesting. And maybe it just, he comes off looking worse because he's always so calm and collected versus Usagi, who's always a uh, drama queen about what he says. So, yeah, I don't know. I I saw that, or I saw that line, and I'm like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I watched that, and I immediately thought of what you said during episode two. I was like, It also you know. <laughs> made me think that I so want a version. This antagonistic relationship they have only really exists in the anime. In manga and mm-hmm. Crystal, they don't really have this kind of relationship. They have a more... 
I don't know, it's a more sweet relationship, sort of. I don't know, I, I don't really know how to describe it, except they, like, they do run into each other, often. But it, they don't have this kind of antagonism. But I, I want a version of Sailor Moon where Usagi and Mamoru are incredibly antagonistic towards each other. But as Sailor Moon and Tuxedo oh, Mask, yes. they work together often. Throughout the show, Tuxedo Mask normally comes in, says a line, throws a rose, and then he mm-hmm. outs. I would love to see more of mm-hmm. the them working together like in the tennis episode early on and as she gets more mm, senshi yeah. with her he starts taking a backseat role because mm-hmm. she doesn't need him anymore but have this incredibly antagonistic relationship between usagi and mamaru so that when they realize oh my god that, yes oh we were in love in a past you, you're life, the same person <laughs> and so now we have all of these memories spoiler alert um <laughs> i guess if you've never seen sailor moon <laughs> having to deal with the, the fact that uh, I don't really like you. Oh, yeah. But we've worked together to defeat evil. And also, apparently, mm-hmm. you were in love in a previous life. Like, having to deal mm-hmm. with these emotions mm-hmm. and everything. And the different conflicting uh, mm-hmm. viewpoints. Mm-hmm. That would be really good. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I love that. It kind of, is that a stretch to say that I, it kind of reminds me of um, Cardcaptor Sakura, where the two main leads, they hate each other in the beginning. I think his name is Lee. I'm, maybe I'm remembering that wrong. But then they, then they like work together, they realize that they're the same person, and then they're like, wait a minute. <sighs> I guess I'm in love with you. Maybe I'm remembering that wrong, but it also kind of reminds me of Miraculous Ladybug. I don't know if you've seen that with the love square. (laughs) So I was actually going to say first that I have to turn in my shoujo card because I've never seen Card Captor Sakura. Drusilla! Uh, (laughs) uh, And my Magical Girl card, I guess. But I was also thinking as you were saying that, I've never seen Card Capture Sakura, but I've seen Miraculous <laughs> Ladybug, and that's what this is sounding like. So yes, I have, um, I can't remember if I've seen all of it, but I've seen mm. most of Ladybug. And that's another show that I just love the way they've handled yes. that yes. Yeah, love square. Me too. Uh, I... I guess. <laughs> this isn't so. a Miraculous Ladybug <laughs> episode, but mm. if you like magical girls, I think the creator actually took some inspiration from Sailor Moon. And there's actually an anime version of it, of the first episode, which was really cool if you want to check that out. (laughs) I might have to watch that. That sounds really cool. It's so cool. Like, the transformation is, you can definitely tell that the creators took took inspiration from Sailor Moon. And especially with, like, Cat and War's transformation, you should look at it. (laughs) After we do a Sailor Moon podcast, maybe we'll do a Miraculous (laughs) Ladybug podcast. (laughs) So, yeah. (laughs) With that being said. So, sorry, that was a digression, but one that was very fun. But we're already pretty Mm -hmm. far into this uh, recording. We haven't even talked about episode 10, so let's go ahead and dive into that. Um, Would you like to go first? Okay, so my moon moment from this is when Rei and Usagi are trapped in that weird limbo of the Negaverse and the portal is closing and Ami has no idea what to do and she's kind of just panicking and having a full-on anxiety of like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Like, me pray, not like necessarily pray for them, but like hope for their safety and I just thought that because, like, her hope and, like, her love for them was so much that it actually, like, sent out a beam of light for them to, like, keep this portal open and for them to kind of, like, follow back into their world. And I thought that was really cool because... There's no mention of these kinds of powers from Ami. Ami is still relatively new to being a Sailor Scout, and she doesn't know how powerful she is and it was kind of cool that she kind of like awakened this this inert power i guess because she cared for usagi and her new friend rei who she barely knows so much and that because she cared for them so much this power kind of awoke within her and helped the two get back into their world 
thus also saving the people that were kidnapped on the buses and helping them win their fight. So that would be my moon moment. What about you? So I think we're getting into the weeds with this, but I think that would qualify as a moon moment for the universe versus like I feel like all of our other moon moments we can use it to relate to something in the wider world like a larger concept but that is like a very specific power thing and I think it's a moon moment for the Sailor Moon universe because you do see them because I I pictured this as you know in the season finale of uh, I think just about almost every season finale when they're fighting the big bad all the scouts kind of concentrate their power to help Usagi to boost Usagi into defeating the bad guy and so that's what I'm kind of picturing this is basically what Ami is doing because she does call upon well I guess this might be a deep dub I can't remember but she calls upon Mercury like you know in the name of Mercury please and so she's using that power to keep the portal open so uh, yeah I don't know I guess that depends on what we want to count at because I feel I can't think of a moon moment that we've had so far that is strictly an in-universe thing it's there's always been a way for us to relate to the outside but I'm sorry to say that no matter how much you hope and pray, sometimes things just don't work out. I kind of... Um, You know, there really needs to be action behind it. I kind of look at it as, you know how there are those moments where you're in trouble and you have that inhuman strength? Like, those are, there are, like, stories of people, like, lifting cars by themselves, like, having that, like, rush of adrenaline and making something impossible possible. So I kind of looked at it in that way, like kind of the um, more fantastical version of it, in that it seemed very like impossible for one person to keep a portal open. She does not know where they are. She does not. She has no way of getting to them. But like some like inhuman strength, that surge of adrenaline kind of helped to get keep that portal open. I guess if we're like trying to tie it into real world happenings is how I looked at it. And I see what you're saying, but I don't think because the adrenaline thing, I'm pretty sure is you know, a documented mm. thing. I mean, that's why there are adrenaline shots, mm-hmm. right? But I don't think that's something, because everything else you can apply it to something in your life, but the needing an adrenaline boost for something hopefully most people in their lives will not need to lift a car off of someone or to out one a bear speaking of don't try to out one <laughs> bears like depending on the bear you should either climb a tree or play dead or curl up yeah <laughs> curl up in a ball and hope that the grizzly goes away so mm. i think i don't know i like the idea of there being in universe moon moments because Again, Sailor Moon is so all over the place with the powers of what people have. Like, in the cruise episode, Rey using her spiritual mm. power to win, you never really see anything like that again. So, <laughs> I-, I like the idea of there mm-hmm. being in-universe moments, and because we like to see our heroes like get stronger mm-hmm. and unlock new stuff. But So, is this moon moment, um, or... I mean, again, we can throw this to the audience and see what they think. I don't think it's a moon moment because it's it's too universe mm-hmm. specific. And I mean, if anything, we should like dock Ami for being late <laughs> because she, she, Sagi was supposed to meet her and they were supposed to get on the bus together, and Ami was late. So, <laughs> but I I don't think I would consider this a moon moment. You know, maybe a mini moon moment with like a little, you know, sticker that's like in universe, but I wouldn't consider mm. it one. What do you think, mm. audience? Uh, do you think this <laughs> is a moon moment? Should there be a what's the word for it? Uh, I forgot the word for it. Extra universe. Uh, or... A should should it be 
stuck with a sticker that says in universe but moon moment oh like a little asterisk yeah with like a little asterisk yeah 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. should it be with a little asterisk that says in universe moon moment let us know if that's the case then it opens up a lot more potential in universe moon moments which is really just an excuse for us to call out awesome (laughs) moments in the anime (laughs) uh but my okay. moon moment yes. for episode 10 is actually a moon moment for episode 3 of Crystal. <laughs> so my moon moment comes from Crystal. And it's a moment that exists only in Crystal. It's not in the manga. But they both, very similarly to the original anime, they end up in this like extra space. The Jedi is there and uh, there's no Yuma here. It's just Jedi. It's a, you know, Mars, it, or excuse me, at this point, she's Ray. Ray is on the ground. Jedi, he's using his, I guess, ice power to attack both Sailor Moon and Mercury, who is there. And, uh, you know, he's zapping them, and ice is growing on their arms. Ray wakes up and uh, sees Sailor Moon kind of yelling and realizes that that's Usagi. Now, that's the girl she met earlier who came to the temple. She, you know, she says, oh my gosh, you're Usagi. And Usagi, of course, tries to play it off and it doesn't work. Um, Sailor Moon says something about um, this is not something that, like, normal people do. You know, I have these powers and stuff like that. And that is a buzzword for Rey. It kind of rings a bell. Because, like we saw in episode two of Crystal, where it really lays on the fact that Ami is alone, and this girl who, for no reason, was really nice to me and was really friendly to me and I think we might be friends, Crystal kind of lays on the fact that Ray is sort of alone because she has these powers and she doesn't know why she was born with them. It sort of rings a bell in her mind and it's like, wait, you have powers too? And at that point, she gets up, grabs Jedi and stops him, you know, kind of yanks him to try to, from using his powers. But as she's grabbing onto him, the ice starts to build up her arm. And um, he says, ha, you're just an ordinary human. You can't stop me. And she's like, I'm not ordinary. I have powers. Um, And Mm -hmm. she throws, uh, she's able to just like zap all of the ice away. And that's Mm -hmm. when her symbol appears. And that's when Luna throws her the transformation stick and she transforms into Mars. It's a much stronger moment in Crystal than it is in the manga. But that is my moon moment. The fact that she recognizes, you know, she as just an ordinary person is stepping in to try and stop this guy Mm -hmm. from attacking Sailor Moon and Sailor Mercury. She, granted, she knows that this is Usagi and like this is the girl who was kind to me and who I met earlier. But she just steps in really without any regard for her own safety and tries to stop it. And then in classic Rei Hino fashion, when Jedi says, you can't stop me, you're just ordinary. She's like, excuse me? No. Uh, Say that again? <laughs> yes. So, so <laughs> I, and towards the end of the episode, it comes, it circles back around to the idea of like, Rey thinks like, this is why I was born with powers. I was born to meet these people and to help Mm. them, and to be a Sailor Senshi. Yeah, that was my moon moment. Someone stepping in, even when they might be out of their depth. Which I know you could Mm. probably argue that's not a smart idea. But someone stepping in when it might be out of their depth to Mm -hmm. try to help someone else. Mm -hmm. That was my moon moment. I think that also goes back to our conversation of, like, intent, I Mm -hmm. suppose. Because Rei wasn't helping Usagi just because that's what a decent human being would do. But it's also, like you were saying, it really resonated within her. And because it resonated so deeply within Rey, it was kind of like, oh, I see myself as this person. And this person helped me. Like, I also, like, I want to be that person, too. Also, at this point, I think they're, like, all of the children that have been taken by the buses are there. So it's also a, you know. What about the children? (laughs) Yeah, like, I have to, I have to stop this guy because he's hurting Usagi, who has powers like me, but also he's the one who's kidnapped all these kids. So Mm -hmm. I need to help Mm -hmm. them so we can stop this guy. And so even though she she's quote unquote just Rey Hino, as if there were such a thing, (laughs) 
she just stands up and again physically grabs him to try and stop him i still know and even with her powers you just grabbing someone that's attacking someone else like that takes a lot of guts yeah even without the powers I think that it kind of reminds me of that jazz musician episode where he just jumps mm-hmm. in and tries to fight the Ume, even though he is very powerless, poor guy. But I, I think that's also uh, kind of with Ray's mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, she has powers, but also she's she doesn't know how powerful she is. I also have a mini moon moment for this episode. Um, and it's sort of... So it's sort of split into... So, again, this, I think, kind of falls under, I don't know if we can count them as many moon moments because it's sort of, this is a Sailor Senshi's duty, and this is what they should be doing. And so the first one is actually in Crystal. Usagi uses the pen to transform into a flight attendant. And, uh, but she Mm -hmm. does that when, like, she's... I think she's waiting for Ami at the bus stop, and she sees the bus go by, and it's only a brief second, but she sees Rey in the bus, because instead of Rey sort of being captured by Jedi and sent to that other realm, he, I think, grabs her at the temple and then puts her on the bus, and he's actually the one driving the bus because there is no Yoma, Yuma, in at least this episode of Crystal. So for like a brief moment, as this bus goes by, she sees Ray on the bus. So she's like, Ray is in trouble. I have to go. Transformation pin, flight attendant. And she just starts booking it because the bus isn't slowing down. And then she just jumps for the bus as it's going through the little black hole dimension thing. And so this was, I had it down as a mini moment because because she just goes for it. There's no thinking about it. She's like, mm-hmm. Ray's in trouble, I gotta go. But I also think it is her duty as Sailor Moon. This is not... uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know. You could say, obviously, if you see someone in a sketchy situation, you should investigate. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a girl who, you know, is passed out on a park bench at night, Mm -hmm. you might want to try to wake her up Mm -hmm. and put her into a cab. So... Mm It's like, yes, this could be a mini moon moment, but it's also, it is so immersed in the, she's a sailor senshi, and she's supposed to protect people, Mm -hmm. and that's what she's doing here. So I wasn't sure Mm -hmm. whether this would qualify or not. Well, I feel like at this point, Usagi is still coming into terms of being what the duties are of being like a sailor senshi, because she... In the beginning of the episode, when her and Ami were trying to get on the bus, she was throwing, like, a huge fit about it and being like, oh, I don't want to go on the bus. Like, I'm scared. Like, I don't want to do it. And Ami was trying to convince her to be like, oh, like, we have to go on the bus. Like, we have to do it for, like, research and we have to see where, like, these people are going. I don't think she did it out of duty, per se, because she's a sailor scout. But I think she did it more of oh, Ray is on the bus, I gotta help her. Looking at her earlier actions of not really taking being a Sailor Scout super duper seriously yet. Like, there are instances where she does do her due diligence as a Sailor Scout, but I think more often than not, she, at least in the earlier episode, she leans towards the easier route of avoiding it or prolonging her duties as long as she can. So I would actually say that this is a moon moment, not just a mini one. Hey, yeah, because I I didn't think about it in that way. That it's not so much, it's she's not looking at it like, it's my duty, I have to do this. But, oh my gosh, Ray is on that bus, the bus is bad, I need to try and help mm. her. And she can do that yeah. with the transformation pin and because she's Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I didn't even think about that. So surprise moon I moment, think... I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think especially with the transformation pen as well, she's still coming, she mostly uses it for disguise, right? It's what it's used for, but she doesn't have to use it. I think she uses it more out of frivolity because like she wants to look cute or like she wants to fit the theme of what is happening and the powers and stuff that come with it are kind of like, like a side thought. In this episode of the original anime, mm-hmm. there's a new layer to it. 
Because in the previous episodes, yes, she's used it for disguise uh, to sneak into a jazz club or to uh, go on a ship or to go into a radio station. But here, she, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I think it's in both the dub and sub. Um, but she says, Luna's trying to get her on the bus, like literally like grabbing at her skirt and trying to pull her. And she's like, okay, well, I'll go, but please let me have a disguise. Um, mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's almost like a confidence booster. As Usagi, I can't handle this, but let me be a gorgeous flight attendant and I'll be able to... And, and that works. Like, as soon as she transforms, she yeah. jumps on the bus and is like, stop this mm-hmm. bus, uh, you know? And so maybe mm-hmm. that's more, like, I don't know. I, I think she's using it as almost a shield um, to kind, kind of, of like, of... kind of like, uh, oh, sorry. I was trying to relate this to, you know, how makeup is for people. Yeah. It's, it's like that confidence booster, you know, um, there sometimes you don't want to go out without makeup because like, oh, you don't look as like put together, I guess, as society wants you to look. There are times when, oh, like, putting on makeup just will, like, help boost your own confidence. And I think that's how the makeup pen is, or the transformation pen is for Usagi in this instance. Yeah, the same thing, I mean, can be said about clothing. Mm -hmm. You find a really awesome pair of jeans or a really cute dress, Mm -hmm. and you You just just feel great. Yeah, you just feel like you could take over the world. Yeah, (laughs) surprisingly. I did have some other mini moments. Um, well, I've had them marked as mini moments, but I they also may fall under the it's her duty umbrella. Mm-hmm. And this was the moment where, so in the original anime, she's in the other world. The Yuma has caught Rei, and Usagi is on the ground and she's crying. And um, in... The sub, uh, so Luna says, Usagi, you have to transform into Sailor Moon. Usagi says, I'm so sick of this, but I'll do it. And uh, then Luna says, yes, your carefree spirit and optimism are your true strength. Uh. <laughs> but in in the deep dub, it's also sort of similar. Luna says, you've got to become Sailor Moon now. And Usagi says, I guess, Serena. Because I'm talking about the detail. <laughs> and to confuse our audience who hasn't seen uh, the deep dub. You know, she says, the, uh, sorry, the in the Filipino version, they call her Bunny. <laughs> the mixed Tokyo Pop English translations of the manga call her Bunny because it's the sh- literal translation of her name. Um, <laughs> but so she says, all right, just one more good sob. And then she stands up and says, okay, I'm ready. And Luna says, see, you can be brave when you put your mind to it. So um, I am... I thought this was sort of a mini moon moment um, because uh, it's showing that even though the the phrasing is different, they both show that, you know, Isagi is sort of coming into her own. And of course, depending on the situation, you cannot like a situation or something, but you just plow through it and get it done anyway. Uh, You put on your big girl panties (laughs) and you just uh, get it done. So I kind of thought this might be a mini moon moment. I didn't consider it a full-on moon moment because, again, I thought this was a Sailor Senshi duty kind of situation. But I think it's still a moon moment because it shows that you don't have to love your job. You don't have to love the people that are there. You're there for a reason, whether it's to get more experience or to have something on your resume and to make some money and there is always a moment where you have to consider how much more of this do I want to deal with, like balancing the pros and cons of the situation. But I think it shows that you cannot like something and still get it done. Mm-hmm. Especially like if you've committed to something mm-hmm. and then you realize you're like, I don't know if I want to yeah. go through with this. Yeah. You've committed, you can just grit your teeth and mm-hmm. bear it. Although... Maybe if you're having second thoughts about, you know, getting married. Well, maybe not get married. <laughs> maybe maybe you should <laughs> So. I think this would be more of the mini, mo- mo- mini mm-hmm. moment. Because 
this, I feel, falls more under the question of duty because Luna is actually beside her telling her to do this yeah. instead of Usagi just making a split second decision of mm-hmm. whether or not to jump on this bus. Yeah, I yeah, I would say this is moon moment. Commendable. Mini moment. Yeah, mini moon moment. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Commendable that she ultimately did it, but she had to go through a lot of persuading from Luna. Mm-hmm. And when I was going back through and making sure I had quotes and things correct, and I was really hoping mm. that didn't have Luna saying, you need to transform into Sailor Moon. But they both do. They have some variation of it. Mm. So, oh well. Still so across the mini board, moment. mini moment. Um, <laughs> so, that's going to do it for this episode, I think. That's a, yeah. But yeah, this was a pretty in-depth episode, I feel like. I mean, it was five episodes, so yeah. and you know sorry that it is a little bit longer than we usually like to do but we have Rehino on the floor everyone we have to give her her, <laughs> her, uh, her, her due diligence <laughs> yes thank you for sticking with us so the next episode will cover 15 through 19 so five episodes you know i just realized something i was going to ask the audience a question Let's extend this podcast a little bit longer. (laughs) I read the Eternal Edition of the manga because it is right now considered to be the best English translation that we have. However, I also flip through my mix Tokyo Pop versions just to see if there are any interesting sidebars in it. If you listen to our first episode, there was an interview with Takeuchi that I made mention of in that I took a picture of, you can find it on the show notes for episode one. For the third chapter, Ray's introductory chapter, Tokyo Mix version, there's something called Notes from Naoko. And um, it's talking about um, uh, Sailor Mars, some notes about Ray and Miko and stuff like that. And she says, by the way, did you know I wrote this chapter different for the anime TV show than for this motionless version, which is what they describe the manga as. That's right, see if you can find the differences. You'll notice that I made a lot of things different between the two. I can find nothing that says Takeuchi worked on the anime. I mean, obviously she was a consultant, but the manga was publishing at like the exact time that the anime was being produced. And all of the stuff that I have heard over the years has been that she was giving them basically broad outlines of things she had in mind. And that's what they were going with. And uh, But this note in the book makes it seem like she wrote this episode of the anime, which, you know, I I can't read Japanese, so I can't read the credits in the show. But according to Wikipedia, she is not the writer on this episode. For anyone out there who has greater Sailor Moon knowledge, do you think this is just a weird translation mistake? Do you think she was really just saying, oh, the manga version is different from the anime version. See if you can spot the difference. And they just weirdly translated it. But... Yeah, I'd be interested if there is something to this. Um, Like, she did give copious notes on this. I mean, obviously, Anime Ray is very different from Manga Ray. So I don't know. And I think she's, I think she's wholly an anime creation. Like, I don't think Takeuchi was like, you should make Ray different. Um, So if anyone has any clues or ideas or you know knows of an interview where this is sort of explained or if you just think it's just a weird translation thing I would really like to know because all of Takeuchi's time must have been dedicated to doing the manga I can't imagine she would have had time to also help write the script yeah I'm covering weird like gems I don't know if they're gems like weird rocks weird shaped rocks (laughs) moon mysteries (laughs) is this a new segment moon mysteries moon mysteries (laughs) anyway next episode will cover Sailor Moon episodes 15 through 19 please check out our social media on twitter and instagram at moon moment pod let us know the answer to our moon mystery (laughs) 
And uh, obviously, a lot of this episode was, um, is this a moon moment? Is it a mini moon moment? Our very long discussion about the female empowerment section, you know, please let us know your thoughts. Also, don't forget to check out our website at moonmomentpod.com. We'll have the transcripts, we'll have the show notes, uh, you know, we'll have links, and as I said, I'll post uh, the photo of this uh, notes from Naoko to it, uh, so you can see it for yourself. Um, Let us know what your moon moment musings are. We would love to hear from you, as Drusilla has stated. Let us know what your uncoverings are for our moon mysteries, <laughs> and maybe you just might get a shout out. If you'd like to support the podcast, please rate, review, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It helps Moon Moments stay afloat amidst the vast ocean of podcasts. Okay, I just let me just say that I am really proud of my uh, tennis joke that I made in this episode <laughs> run through. <laughs> just like just throwing that out there because I used to be a really avid like tennis player, but I personally find the space jokes very a uh, moon sing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> had to throw that one out there too <laughs> I'm Giselle <laughs> and I'm Gilsey we will see you moon bye <laughs> bye bye <laughs>